You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 10th of July. Indian Prime Minister holds talk with Austrian Chancellor in his maiden visit to Vienna. Pakistan plans to delay raising power tariffs until October. Bangladesh PM Hasina seeks Chinese assistance for repatriation of Rohingyas. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi held bilateral talks with Austrian Chancellor Karl Nehammer on Wednesday upon arriving in Austria for the second leg of his three-day official visit. The visit by Prime Minister Modi to Vienna is the first by any Indian Prime Minister in 41 years and coincides with the 75th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between New Delhi and Vienna. Earlier on Tuesday, the Indian Prime Minister also held a private engagement with Austrian Chancellor. The maiden visit of the Prime Minister also took a cultural note with the Austrian artists performing Vande Mataram to welcome the Indian Prime Minister. Taking to X, Prime Minister Modi said India-Austria friendship is strong and added that both nations will continue to work together to further global good. An encounter was underway between security forces and terrorists in Doda district of India's Jammu and Kashmir on Wednesday. The gunfight had begun on Tuesday evening after a cordon and search operation was launched by security forces in Gadi Bagwa forest following information about the presence of terrorists in the region. This comes at a time when intensive search operation is being conducted by forces in Katwad region in the wake of the terrorist attack on army convoy on Monday. Five soldiers identified as Nayab Subedar Anand Singh, Havildar Kamal Singh, Nayak Vinod Singh and rifleman Anuj Negi and Ardarsh Negi were killed in action in the Monday attack which happened at the place which is part of the old infiltration route along the international border. The attack is believed to be the latest in a series of terrorist incidents in the region which have been attributed to attempts by Pakistan to disrupt the peaceful atmosphere in Jammu and Kashmir. Pakistan's Prime Minister Shabash Sharif on Tuesday informed that his government is planning to delay raising power tariffs until October. Offering respite on power rates, a key component in the country's agreement with the IMF. Reining in unresolved debt across Pakistan's power sector is a top concern of the IMF with which Islamabad plans to sign a deal this month. Poor and middle class households are still feeling the impact of the IMF's bailout of Pakistan last year which involved a series of power tariff hikes over 12 months as part of the IMF program which ended in April. Sharif said the decision to delay the raising of power tariffs would benefit 94% of domestic households as the country of 300 million people face summer temperatures surging to a near record. He added that Pakistan has no choice but to enter a new IMF program and that Islamabad wants to sign a three-year deal. While the budget may win approval from the IMF, high taxes on a struggling economy could fuel public anger according to analysts. Representatives of local bodies in Pakistan-occupied Jammu and Kashmir this past week held protest in the region demanding release of development funds promised months ago. They alleged that government, led by Chaudhary Anwar ul Haq, is not at all serious over making the local bodies operational in the region. A report. Representatives of local bodies in Pakistan occupied Jammu and Kashmir this past weekend set up protest camps in the region as they voiced their anger over the lack of development funds and powers promised to them by the Prime Minister of POJK, Chaudhary Anwar Haq. Reflecting a growing discontent among the elected officials, the sit-in was also joined by the women councillors from across the region. 
उसके बाद की सूरत हाल आप सब लोगों के सामने है क्या वजीरों एम एल एस का हक है कि ये मोहल्ले में टूटियाँ नलके सेवरेज लाइन्स ये सारी देनी उनका काम है हर गिज नहीं ये जो बल्दियाती नुमाइंदे मंतख होके आए हैं ये उनका काम है ये वो लोग हैं जिनके दरवाज़ों पे आसानी से सब लोग आ रहे हैं और अपनी फरियादें अपने मसाइल अपने मसले बता रहे हैं और हम लोग जानते हैं कि मल्ले में किस क्या मसला है और हम लोग उसको बेहतर तरीके से हल भी कर सकते हैं The protesting representatives have demanded immediate allocation of funds and the power to execute their responsibilities effectively. They criticized the government for delaying the promised support and alleged that the government led by Chaudhry Anwarul Haq is not at all serious over making the local bodies operational in the region. Lambasting the government over their treatment of local bodies, the protesters say that demands are not just for personal gain but for the benefit of the public. People in the region have been waiting for years for a better administration that could work for their welfare and the region's development. But the apathetic attitude of the government has worsened the condition. Mr. Yazan Sir, I am asking you this question from your own family. As you are sitting on the board and sitting on the assembly, this is a different thing. You have taken some more than you have. We have taken some more than you have. You are the Murina Mende. We are the Murina Mende. You are the Imam of the Imam. We are the Imam of the Imam. This question is my question. जब आप अपने हक का उतारा करते हैं, तो आपको परेशानी क्यों होती है? हमारा विधिरिया तो सेनेट समिति में खड़े होकर ये कहता है, अगर बल्दियाती ने मंदों को हक लिया जाए, तो क्या हम रेडी लगा रहे? आपके न सोच को सलाम करता हूँ कि विधिरिया तो मौका विधिरिया उनके मन सब पे बैठकर आपने ये बात की, ये The United Nations Assistant Mission in Afghanistan, UNEMA, in its latest report, has criticized the practices of the Ministry of Virtue and Vice in Afghanistan, particularly those affecting women and girls. The report primarily focused on the human rights situation and the ministries and highlights that certain methods employed in enforcing directives and orders have led to human rights violations. The report also mentions Afghanistan's membership and commitments to several UN human rights documents and emphasizes the need to fulfill these commitments. The report says that comprehensive prohibitions with discriminatory consequences have been imposed on women in Afghanistan. Previously, UNIMA's quarterly report on the human rights situation in Afghanistan also criticized widespread violations of women's and girls' rights in Afghanistan. Since Kabul fell to Taliban in 2021, the regime has been imposing severe restrictions on women, banning them from work and public places. Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, who is on a three-day visit to China, on Tuesday sought help from Beijing for the repatriation of forcibly displaced Rohingyas to their homeland in Myanmar. PM Hasina told the Chinese delegation that Rohingyas who have been in shelters in Bangladesh for over six years and no initiative has been taken yet for their repatriation to Myanmar. China, which maintains good relations with Myanmar, has been negotiating deals for the repatriation of the Rohingyas. She also discussed reducing the trade gap between Bangladesh and China the celebration of the 50 years of diplomatic relations between the two countries in meaningful way next year. 
Both nations also signed 21 cooperation documents, mostly MOUs, and stronger development and economic cooperation between the two Asian countries after the bilateral meeting led Hasina and Chinese Premier. Hasina will conclude her visit after meeting Xi Jinping. Amid political instability in Nepal, senior Nepali Congress leader Shekhar Koirala said on Tuesday that a new coalition between the KP Sharma Oli led CPNUML and the Nepali Congress was essential for the country's political stability. I have been advocating for a stable government and good governance for quite a while, which is not being realized. However, with the NCUML coalition, all set to make corrections in the constitution and boost the national economy. There is hope. Kerala was quoted as saying by news agency RSS. The comments from the Nepali Congress leader comes days ahead of a floor test by Prime Minister Pushpakamal Dehel on Friday. The fifth vote of confidence by Dehel was mandated after a major ally of the coalition government, CPNUML, worked out of the ruling alliance and joint hands with Chair Bahadur Durba led Nepali Congress. Prime Minister Dehil, who has a total of 62 votes in the 275 member parliament, is set to lose the trust vote, paving the way for the formation of a new government. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.